How do you treat your mother? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. There was a teenager who didn't want to be seen in public with her mother because her mother's arms were terribly disfigured. One day, when her mother took her shopping and reached out her hand, a clerk looked horrified. Later, crying, the girl told her how embarrassed she was. Understandably hurt, the mother waited an hour before going to her daughter's room to tell her, for the first time, what happened. When you were a baby, I woke up to a burning house. Your room was an inferno. Flames were everywhere. I could have gotten out the front door, but I decided I'd rather die with you than leave you to die alone. I ran through the fire and wrapped my arms around you. Then I went back through the flames, my arms on fire. When I got outside on the lawn, the pain was agonizing. But when I looked at you, all I could do was rejoice that the flames hadn't touched you. Stunned, the girl looked at her mother through new eyes. Weeping in shame and gratitude, she kissed her mother's marred hands and arms. Today is the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church. It was included in the annual liturgical calendar by Pope Francis in 2018. Inscribed on a new mosaic in St. Peter's Square in Rome are the words, Totus Tuus, or Totally Yours, the motto used by St. John Paul II during his pontificate. It comes on the day after the Feast of the Pentecost, where our Mother was present along with the disciples at Pentecost as the Holy Spirit descended upon them. In Catholic Mariology, Mother of the Church is a title given by Pope St. Paul VI at the conclusion of the Second Vatican Council. St. Ambrose of Milan was the first to use it in the 4th century. Our Catechism of the Catholic Church also addresses our Mother in this manner, stating that Mary joined in bringing about the birth of believers in the Church who are members of its head. And, at once Virgin and Mother, Mary is the symbol and the most perfect realization of the Church. Our Mother was in the midst of the disciples praying during the birth of the Church. She was also at the foot of the cross, along with the beloved disciple and some women. Jesus, in great pain and uttering the seven last words we all know, that speak of his mission and agony in fulfillment of the scriptures, inserts one very secular yet very significant word. He said, This is your mother. Woman, this is your son. Indeed, she becomes the mother of all disciples, mother of the church, us, and we are all enjoined to love her and our mothers and care for them. In the first reading, Eve is referred to by God as the mother of all those who live. Our mother Mary, is considered the new Eve. Mothers pray for their children and the Blessed Mother is no exception. We recognize this in our Hail Mary prayer when we ask her to pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. It is comforting to know that our mothers pray for us always. Our Blessed Mother and all mothers have in their hearts the welfare of their own children. Mothers suffer and die to themselves many times especially as their children begin to crave for their independence, seek their own identity, pursue their own dreams. But mothers will never stop loving their children. As we honor the mother of the church, let us also honor our own mothers, who are epitomes of the love, the faithfulness, the humility, and obedience to God's will that was best exemplified by our Blessed Mother. Let us thank them for their sacrifices for us and their efforts to nurture us, even in their own naivete, weaknesses and frailties as human beings. Let us kiss their fragile, marred, and scarred hands and thank God for the model of our Blessed Mother, who showed our mothers the real meaning of love. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Mother of the Word Incarnate, never was it known that anyone who sought your intercession was left unaided. Accept my prayers and lead me to humility, obedience, and faithfulness to God's will. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. 
God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ. Today is the second week leading to the 40th anniversary of Couples for Christ. We are enjoined to observe the second virtue in our theme centered on striving for holiness by putting on love through our anchor verse from Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 to 15. Let us focus on this virtue for the whole week and challenge ourselves with acts of kindness and love for everyone around us. Let's watch this. After having supper with his disciples, Jesus prayed in the garden. A moment later, soldiers arrived to arrest him. Peter drew his sword to defend Jesus. He happened to cut off the ear of Malchus, a servant of Jesus' captor. But Jesus asked his disciples to put their swords away. Then he healed the wounded man, even though he was among his oppressors. What Jesus showed is kindness. It can be recalled that during the Sermon on the Plain, Jesus taught us to be merciful because our Father is merciful. He also reminded us to do good not only to those who can repay us or love us too. He said, Love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Brothers and sisters, let us put on kindness today.